Hey guys, Matthew here, and today I'm going to be sharing with you guys the step-by-step -step guide on how I crafted the best elemental bow that has ever existed in Path of Exile, and this is including Standard. Now, TLDR on how that was even possible, essentially in 3.17, GGG added new tiers of flat elemental damage to bows, which allowed them to rival the reigning superpower of physical bows, and in some cases, surpass it. This is essentially due to the fact that Crystallized Omniscience doesn't require penetration anymore on weapons, and of course, Secrets of Suffering allows us to bypass Critical Strike Chance on our weapon as well, which means we can just go all out on flat DPS and get a monstrous amount of it total, and this is exactly what I did. Now, I do believe that this bow has currently uh, has the current world record for item that has been mirrored the most in the first 24 hours of its creation. Currently, this bow has 114 copies of it just running around ray class on different ranger builds and i'm super proud of it uh, a lot of people have been asking me how i made it so i'm just gonna go ahead and take you guys through a step-by-step -step guide before that let's just give you guys a quick run on the modifiers and why this bow is so good uh so it's a synthesized ticket bow and it has bow attacks fire an additional attack uh, an additional arrow which is obviously uh extremely powerful because it means that you don't need to uh actually invest into as many arrows as you normally would if you want to just go for pure damage because gmp is a less damage multiplier for example so you could just take that off and go with a proper damaging support like i don't know damage on full life for example okay now that we've gotten that out of the way, uh, we are obviously going to be going for triple elemental damage, and this is triple T1, or in, in our case, the fire damage is an essence, which is roughly, I believe, 0.6% less damage than an actual tier 1 modifier, but it makes crafting this bow basically 100 times easier, uh, which is why we go for essence, because it doesn't make much sense. You could simply just divine the mod better than a regular T1, and you, you could basically not tell the difference. Obviously, the 114 people who have who have copied it made uh, decided that it wasn't too big of a deal. Uh, next, we are going to have bow attacks fired two additional arrows for a total of three arrows, which is obviously amazing. And then the best in slot unveil for us is double damage because, as I previously mentioned, we don't care for crit as we have secrets of suffering. And that is the case for a lot of bow builds right now. And of course, uh, we actually don't care for any other of the affixes which we could unveil. Uh, such as attack speed because the actual damage that you get from double damage is better than if you were to get the attack speed unveil and then craft on a uh, double damage instead so this was actually our best in slot unveil and then of course we're going to finish off with t uh, crafted attack speed the only way to realistically beat this bow by a large margin would be to recraft it but instead of having the crafted attack speed having the t1 i believe that would be something like 3.5 percent more damage but it would also be basically impossible without the usage of um, uh, eternal orbs which are only available in standard or just an absolute truckload of luck uh, but one thing to note is that if you did have the t1 attack speed which you would probably get before the unveil for double damage you would end up crafting double damage which would only go up to 10 percent and in this case it would actually be only barely a percent, uh, one or two percent better uh, than what I currently have. So again, I'm extremely happy with the uh, the state of the bow. Okay, now now we we got that out of the way. Let's go ahead and look into the step by step method of crafting this bow. So what it's going to start with first is getting our prefixes done. So what it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scour the bow and take you guys on a step by step. So as I mentioned previously, we are going to go with Essences for our first flat elemental damage. We can go for Anger, which is going to be uh, Fire Damage, Wrath for Lightning Damage, or Hatred for Cold Damage, okay? So let's go, just go ahead and spam. And essentially what we're looking for is any of the other elemental damage that we don't have. So in our case, we're spamming for Fire, so we're looking for Cold or Lightning, the flat damage. And we're looking for Tier 1 and only Tier 1, right? Uh, so anything that is not tier 1, we are not going to be keeping. And our odds of actually rolling a tier 1 modifier from the Essence is something like 1 in 200. So it's not incredibly expensive, but the problem is the getting the third T1 is where things get really nasty. So let's just go ahead and for the sake of not, you know, spending our entire day here, let's just go ahead and cheat our prefix. So we have T1 fire damage from the Essence, so we are just going to cheat ourselves some T1 cold damage. Because let's just say that you're spamming essences and you do get T1 cold damage. How do you go about getting the third one? And this is where 
it's a real kick in the nuts because essentially what you have to do is lock in your prefixes with the benchcraft suffix prefixes cannot be changed and then you have to reforge uh for the missing element so in our case we have lightning or we have fire and cold so we are going to reforge for lightning and the idea is that this is going to give us lightning damage now it could also give us lightning resistance so let's just do it a few more times as you can see this time it gave us lightning resistance which is actually perfectly fine we're simply just going to craft on prefixes cannot be changed and try again the majority of the time it will give us flat lightning damage or cold or fire whatever we're going for on the reforge uh which is not bad However, the odds of getting tier 1 is roughly 90 of these. Now, 90 of these is not too bad because it means that we're only spending, you know, one technically, we're only spending about 180x for the prefixes cannot be changed to get our third modifier. The problem is it's not that simple because every time that we do this, right, and let's just say after that we hit something bad, we need to annul, the majority of the time, well, in this case, we got lucky, but the majority of the time, we are going to end up killing our bow. This means we have to go back to spamming essences, roughly 200 of them or so, in order to get another tier 1 tier 1 so that we can do the reforge again. Now these 200 essences are going to net you, or are going to cost you anywhere between 5 and 10 exalts, and that is why it can get very, very expensive, because just in the prefixes locking and then the reforge, we're talking about 200x, and then the essences, since it's about 5 or 10x, between 5 and 10x worth of essences, this is obviously going to matter a lot uh, based on supply and the meta and all that, but between 5 and 10 exalt, and you have to do that, you know, upwards of 90 times so we're looking at 500 or about 500 to a thousand exalts on top of the 180 for the prefix lock so the prefixes are worth between 700 to let's just say 1200 exalts right so an average of about 800 x or so in order to just hit the triple t1 prefixes clearly that's a lot of currency but the thing is, while that's a very annoying part, that's actually not the expensive part. That is relatively cheap compared to what comes next, which is getting the plus two arrows. Now, the best way to get the plus two arrows, and I'm just going to go ahead and cheat my way on the bow so we can uh, save ourselves some time. So we've got uh, tier one fire, tier one lightning, and let's just go ahead and add tier one cold as well to make our bow perfect prefixes. Now, in this case, we've got three uh, prefixes, which are absolutely perfect. What we need to do is finish off the suffixes and the only way to realistically do the suffixes is going to be to prefix lock with the suffix craft prefixes cannot be changed and then to reforge plus attack and the reason for that is because if you look inside the game uh the additional arrows has uh the attack tag which means we are going to basically uh target it by doing a reforge attack this is going to cost us two exalt every single time and not to mention that whenever you reforge and you actually get three suffixes uh which is possible but fairly rare you will need to do a reforge keeping prefixes which is another exalt every single attempt um and that's essentially how we're going to go about getting plus two or uh, plus one attack right just like that this is perfect so in our case we actually got the plus one attack without any other modifiers and that is literally best in slot because it means that we don't have to gamble or do any sort of annulling but one thing to note which a lot of people don't know uh when it comes to crafting bows is or when it comes to crafting in general is that annuls actually do respect meta mods just as cannot roll attack mods or cannot roll casters so let's just say that when we did our reforge attack yes we got the plus one arrow but we also got i don't know say attribute requirements right now because this doesn't have an attack tag and our three prefixes and additional arrow do have an attack tag what we can do instead of crafting prefixes cannot be changed and annulling which is what most people would think is the way to go right what we can do is we can craft on uh, cannot roll attack mods and now when we go ahead and annul we are guaranteed to hit either the cannot roll attack mods or the attribute requirement uh if you would please there we go right so that means that our bow is 100 safe and so are our prefixes and that is going to save you a tremendous amount of currency i would say that anybody who does not know about this little trick is going to have a very hard time crafting a bow like this Okay, so now one thing that I can't really show you guys is how to turn this plus one arrow into plus two arrow because the emulator of Craft of Exile doesn't do it properly. Uh, but what we would need to do, let's say we got to this point where we have plus one arrow, our three prefixes and nothing else, we would once again do prefix lock. And now what we need to do is harf, uh, harvest with reforge more likely. Now reforge more likely is going to make it so whenever the game picks which modifiers are on your item, it is more likely to pick things that were in the same pool before. 
Now, one of the problem with this on Craft of Exile is that currently bow attacks fire an additional arrow is considered a different pool of modifiers than plus two arrows. But in the actual game, and if you look at PoEDB, you'll see that it's actually the same pool. And what that means is that when you do reforge more likely, and it does decide to pick you back uh, and give you back an additional arrow, there's a one in 11 chance that it actually turns into two additional arrow. And you'll see though, when you do reforge more likely, it will always, 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 always give you an additional affix every single time. Now, if this affix is going to be good or bad, is completely left to RNG, is it going to have an attack tag? Is it not going to have an attack tag? That is all left to RNG. But the idea is that every time you get plus one arrow, you want to reforge it more likely uh, to try to make it into two arrows. And then if let's say you fail, right, and it stays plus one arrow, but you get another modifier, you need to get rid of that modifier. Because if you ever were to reforge more likely with two suffixes already on the item, you're a guaranteed three suffixes, and then you basically just lost your plus one arrow, because at this point, you have to reforge keeping prefixes. Uh, otherwise, you just have to yellow and null, and that is just absolutely not good. All right, so that's exactly what we're going to be doing. Uh, so in our case here, for example, the critical multiplier does not have an attack tag. So we're just going to go ahead and annul it with cannot roll attack modifier once more. And this is going to guarantee that it hit either the attack mods, which is, you know, one exalt or the mod that we don't care about. And then we could do, you know, previously not be changed and reforge more likely again and again and again until our plus one arrow becomes plus two arrow. That's pretty much how it goes because it's a one in 11, right? And it would take on average about 50x to actually see this plus one arrow to show up because it's like 25 or so, 26 reforged attacks to even see it. And then of course, there are some situations where you won't be able to save it with the cannot roll attack mods tech. Um, sometimes you'll just have to outright annul for it. Uh, it's very, very expensive. And then you need to see it on average 11 times, which is a further 600x to actually get to the point where you'll have plus two arrows on your bow. And that is being extremely, extremely conservative. It can be way more than that. But let's just say you got to the point where you had plus two arrows. You just spent, you know, 600x on average. You spent about 1,000x on your prefixes. Now you're pretty happy. Now what time it is. Now it's time to get your unveil. Which means this additional arrows, they are no longer safe. So what we're going to do here in order to maximize our, our, our ability to succeed is we are going to craft on... Uh, can have up to three craft and modifiers and then prefixes cannot be changed because now when we unveil instead of being a uh one in well, a 50 50 if you will right whether you'll hit the attack uh, the additional arrows or the plus three or three craft and mods it's actually a two and three that you succeed because if it hits prefixes cannot be changed or multi-mod it's a success so let's just go ahead and ashling unveil and as you can see this time around we actually kept our arrows and it veiled another suffix, but it is absolutely possible to lose your plus two arrows, and then you have to go all the way back from scratch, back to reforging uh, attacks until you get plus one arrow, back to reforging more likely and saving your plus one arrow until it turns into plus two arrows, and then, you know, basically go back. Oh wow, that was pretty heartbreaking, three in a row. Uh, but now we get to the point where we have our uh, two additional arrows, our prefixes, and our veiled suffix. We're going to remove our craft, and before we unveil, we are going to actually benchcraft a, uh, the, the suffix damage per endurance, frenzy, or power charge because it's going to block all three, which have extremely high weighting and they're very bad. And then comes the final step of whether you're going to have a mirror tier bow or not. And you need to unveil and you need to unveil either the attack speed alongside the, um, the attributes, which is the second best or the absolute best, which is double damage. See, something like chance to deal double damage with focus, a lot of people are not going to want to put focus on their builds because it's very inconsistent. Something like attack speed and blood rage, that's not going to be particularly good because, of course, uh, this is going to... Uh this is going to be annoying for your blood rage. However, there is a way to make it so the blood rage doesn't proc uh, by putting something like a cast when damage taken in it or something like that uh, to make because it can't be triggered. However, this is not going to work on our bow because our bow is going to be six length. Uh, so there's no going to be no way to actually save that. So this would be, while it would be an acceptable mod, it wouldn't be a perfect modifier. Uh, and then of course, sometimes it is just going to be outright horrible. Uh, so let's just see if we can hit something just really, really bad. Uh, so for example, I know this would be pretty okay. 
Um, okay, I actually went ahead and bricked it. But yeah, so you have about a 60 to 70% chance to hit either the attack speed and the or, or the double damage, which is not all that bad with the uh, with the actual block. It means that on average, you are definitely going to uh, have success, but it's very possible that you get absolutely nothing, uh, such as like damage over time multipliers and like trigger, uh, you know, uh, triggers uh, when you focus and stuff like that. And those are all just very, very bad. And essentially, that is the step-by-step -step guide on how you go about... Um, finishing a bow like this again not something i would ever recommend the idea when it comes to mirror tier items is that you are much better off mirroring them uh, because the person who actually goes and crafts them is going to lose multiple mirrors for example for me it cost me roughly 4.5 mirrors to craft this including the price of the base uh so it's very very expensive so you're much better off just spending one mirror right and then getting a copy of it than actually crafting it yourself the advantage is that if you go through the process of crafting yourself and you do finish it, then you are going to be able to benefit off of getting mirror services as long as it's an item which is meta and an item which people actually care about. Anyways, hopefully this video was insightful. I know for a lot of people this is a complete uh, you know, disconnect from what you guys are, are used to or what you know um, and what you can and cannot do. Uh, but overall, I still think that this was a... Uh, I still think that this was pretty cool to make and uh, hopefully, you know, maybe it inspires somebody to craft something similar in the future or who knows, maybe even a boat that is possibly going to beat mine. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have for the video. Before uh, before I go, as always, I do want to say a massive thank you to my supporters. So Jacob, Alex, Max, Hamad, Rascoro, Brandon, welcome back, Thomas, Nate, the Great Master, Alex, the other Alex, Tim, Mercury, Johnny, Gary, Fish, and Ailey, the Arsonist, and Bizen, as well as, of course, everybody else who has supported me in the past. Anyone else who is currently missing on the list, and there are quite a few of you guys, so I want to say a massive thank you for the, the support recently, and I hope you guys are all having a great league and a great time, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.